Every security framework recognizes vulnerability management as a core strategy, and virtually every IT and security team I've ever spoken with has a vulnerability management program of some kind. That said, there hasn't been a ton of innovation in this space for some time now, which is interesting given that we know from industry research that software and configuration vulnerabilities continue to be a leading point of entry for attackers. Well, I'm happy to report that SecPod's Saner Now offering is advancing what's possible with vulnerability management solutions. But before I get into that, let's first define the scope of what we're talking about. At their core, vulnerability and patching programs are focused on attack surface reduction with the goal of preventing attackers from leveraging weaknesses in the attack surface. However, vulnerable assets include more than just software and configuration vulnerabilities. Vulnerable systems also include systems running software or services that should not be running and those that should be running software or services that are not, such as security software. Vulnerable systems also include rogue or unknown connected devices. And when we talk about management, we mean discovery, assessment, prioritization, and mitigation of these issues. Ultimately, we are reducing and preventing future attacks. So vulnerability management programs should be thought of as mission critical to prevention strategies which may be a reset to the way you previously thought about vulnerability management. This is important in the broader context of security strategies when we're thinking about risk mitigation in terms of prevention, detection, and response. I like to think about it in terms of a risk funnel where our goal is to narrow the risk to our organization through a series of layered strategies. What's interesting about looking at the process this way is that we can begin to visualize the effect of each layer in the stack and could potentially see where we are applying investment and how it impacts the risk funnel. We see that as we strengthen each layer, we can impact downstream risk and mitigation costs. So the better job we do at the top of the funnel, the less investment in terms of time and cost we need to apply later down the funnel. This is especially true in the relationship between prevention and downstream detection and response activities. The more effective our prevention strategy is, the less investment we need to make in detection and response, based on the assumption that detection and response programs are necessary because of weaknesses in prevention strategies. Okay, if all this is true, let's shift our conversation to what's happening in organizations when it comes to IT infrastructure. With the pace of IT infrastructure expansion and the constant change that's going on today, most security teams are struggling to gain an understanding about what they need to protect. To address this challenge, there's significant industry focus on asset discovery, inventory, and classification based on the premise that we can't protect what we can't see. This, of course, is also true as we think about vulnerability and patch management. We can't identify and patch vulnerable systems if we can't see them. So when I think about the whole process, I'm realizing that IT and security are depending on multiple point vulnerability and patch management solutions in support of this early and very important layer of risk mitigation, including asset discovery, vulnerability assessment, patch management, and risk and posture management. It seems like a good opportunity for consolidation and certainly for innovation. And if we can strengthen this process, we can lower the high cost of downstream detection and response activities while potentially providing some relief to the ongoing industry-wide security skills shortage. In the world of app dev, the shift left movement is pushing more security assessment and remediation further forward in the process. We have a similar opportunity here in attack surface reduction. Similarly, part of the shift left movement is to make the process continuous and automated. Again, we can leverage these strategies in vulnerability management programs to further reduce risk. And finally, we can dramatically improve results when we converge these siloed solutions and processes driving speed, efficiency, and efficacy, ultimately reducing risk. Innovative new solutions from vendors like SecPod are bringing all this to life, reinventing vulnerability management to help IT and security teams assess risk beyond just software vulnerabilities and integrate remediation into the vulnerability management process, thus eliminating the need for separate patching and endpoint management solutions while consolidating multiple siloed solutions. So I'm excited to see innovation happening again in this critical area. You can learn more about what SecPod is doing by clicking on the links below.